see you coming up. So, I'm here in Zanzibar at the Spice Farm. Come join me. I hope you enjoyed my singing. I'm going to go on a tour of the Spice Farm now, so please join me. That tree over there is jackfruit. So if you can take a view at it. You can see the jackfruit growing. Now this one above me over here is durian. The fruit that smells foul, but it's the king of all fruit. It's not in season right now, and we've been told that if it were in season, we would not be able to be standing around here because of all of the spikes and its weight. It could very well kill a human because of, and it's happened before, because of all of the sharp spikes on it and the intense, enormous weight of it. As we move forward over here, we just got a sample of the ginger, tangawizi. I got a sample to taste actually over here. Super, super spicy. <laughs> Too spicy to eat. You can take a look at what the ginger actually looks like over here. This is coffee plant. Yeah, this is coffee, coffee plant. So over here, this is ginger. If we were to pull this up, there would be a ginger root underneath. So this is what it looks like. It's a root vegetable, so it needs to be washed and peeled, washed very thoroughly, scrubbed and then peeled, otherwise you'll get parasites. And it adds enormous flavor with just a tiny piece like this. You can flavor a nice big pot of curry, a nice big sufuria. Now I've been told behind over here are coffee plants. So this over here is the coffee tree. This is how coffee grows. You can see the coffee beans growing here and this is what they look like. You can see various sizes of them. This is actually what coffee, kahawa, is like. Yeah. But this kind of coffee is the robusta coffee because there are two kinds of coffee. They are Arabica coffee Arabic? and robusta coffee. And what? Uh, they are Arabic, Arabic coffee Arabic, yeah. uh, and the robusta coffee. So Arabica coffee, for normally, that tree is small and also growing in the cold climate. Cold climate, Arabic coffee can be grown in cold climates. Yeah. This is a tropical one. Yeah, this tropical one. Yeah, so it's the robusta coffee. So take a look closely yeah, at the coffee yeah, beans in their raw state. <coughs> So we're used to seeing money trees, the money plant, the creeper in our country. Creeper is the actual technical term for it. This is a jumbo mega size money plant over here. This is grown to its full maturity. If you look at this, it's almost the size of a taro, it basically is the size of a taro leaf. The kind that you make patra from, from uh, Arvina Bhajia. And it, this is a full grown money tree that's twined all wrapped around this bigger tree over here. So I'm standing amidst all of these jackfruit trees. You can see how they're growing over here. They're spiky still. You can get a close up shot of it maybe. They are really heavy and you can see how the stems are weighed down from its weight. For those of you who haven't had jackfruit, you should really try it. If it's not available fresh where you live, you can always buy canned jackfruit, which tastes very similar. Not the same, but very, very similar. It's just not as slimy and sticky as fresh jackfruit. Jackfruit is very aromatic and fragrant, and it is delicious. It's really good in um, fruit custards and stuff like that. So this over here is a nutmeg tree. Nutmeg in Indic languages is also called Jaipur Jaipal, and it is uh, aromatic spice. It's used also in Western cooking. It's used a lot in pastas, mashed potatoes. This is the pod that grows. So from the pod, you actually get two spices. From here, you get mace, javantri, and nutmeg, jaifer. So when you open this up, you can see, basically, in this pod, the nutmeg is like the almond. So it's encased with the javantri, the mace over here. Wait, show the mace. And then inside here is the shell of the nutmeg, and inside there is the fruit of the nutmeg actual nut. 
So this is considered a fruit or a droop, just like almonds are. It's not technically a nut. So those of you who have nut allergies, you can eat this. You can even eat almonds, because almonds are a fruit or a droop, not a nut. And it smells really aromatic. It smells like when we were making um, mitai and we would add in a sprinkling of nutmeg. It adds a really warm flavor. This is the signature tone. Here's a secret no one knows at all. This is the secret smell inside donuts. This is what makes you associate donuts with donuts. It's that very light sprinkling of nutmeg inside. So here behind me, there is the pepper tree. You can look at the leaves over here and you can see how the natural formation of peppercorns are there. The seeds, the peppercorns. So at this stage, it's green. There's also these very aromatic leaves over here. It smells peppery. And if you take a look at this, this is what how the pepper grows in a bunch like this. And it's green pepper at this stage. So this is also used in Italian cuisine, in many cuisines. It's used in, they pickle this basically, like similar to gherkins. And then if you want white pepper, once this is mature, it'll turn orange. If you want white pepper, you have to boil it for around five or six minutes and then let it dry and you have white pepper but if you want black pepper you have to let it dry completely and roast it and it'll be black pepper similar thing grows in Madagascar which is pink pepper but this is used this same plant provides three different types of pepper the green peppers which are pickled and used like similar to gherkins the white pepper and then the black pepper is the final stage and it has its most robust and intense flavor and it's the most commonly used spice I think uh, is black pepper. Would you agree with that camera woman? Yes, this is the black pepper pot. So this is actually the first stage of Oops. the coffee plant, kahawa. It looks similar to an asmini. Let's see what it smells like. Absolutely nothing, but it is a nice flower and it can also be used I guess as a decorative asmini in gajra or something like that. And this is the first stage before the coffee beans are grown. You can see all of these bushes of lemongrass. So lemongrass is most associated in the West with Thai food. Something you didn't know is citronella and lemongrass are pretty much the same thing. So this is some that we picked over here. Now if we just do this to release some of the oils and we smell it. Camera woman, what does it smell like to you? Lemongrass. It smells like automus to me. Automus, let's see if I have some. I think I do. Let's do a, a smell test. Aromas, lemongrass. Similar. So aromas, insect repellent, lemongrass, very, very similar. The only difference really is this smells fresher, which I think it should. And um, the oil is much more concentrated. Now, creators of aromas, sponsor me. I can buy nice things then. So behind me you can see the shrub, like tree growing over here, and this is the cardamom plant. So uh, the cardamom plant actually has two sets of roots, interestingly enough. One is underground and it helps the tree to grow. The other one is at ground level and this is where the cardamom pods can be seen growing. So a close-up view. This is what the cardamom pod looks like, green cardamom. It smells cardamom -y and it is basically this is elichi in um, swahili it's called eliki and elchi is basically one of the most common spices in my household uh, at least it's used in pretty much every single indian dessert and mitai including uh, fusion desserts of like the british creme caramel there is elchi inside that as well and it's the most fragrant spice and the most robust spice that we use in almost everything sweet and in very many spicy foods as well. It's one of the key ingredients in garam masala. It's also used in uh, stuff like biryani, in pilau, acne, stuff like that. So it, it smells tremendous and it's nice to see how it's grown. So behind me you can see the ylang ylang tree. So it's basically these leaves and when crushed they have that robust fragrance. There's the flowers that grow from here and the blossoms have that fragrance of ylang ylang. So in Kiswahili it's called mlangi langi and this is the first time I've heard of it. Uh, and we've always known it in the West as ylang ylang. 
This is actually not used for consumption, for eating and flavoring. It's used for products such as soaps, perfumes, lotions. And I have some of the pot in my hand. And when I smell this, it smells exactly like Ylang Ylang. And you can see the salespeople selling uh, products made of Asmini Ylang Ylang and aloe vera and lemongrass over here. Rose soaps, coffee soap, avocado soap, neem soap. Neem is basically limbro, uh, curry pata, and it is, yeah, neem soap, similar to what Dabur makes in India. And this smells like perfume. Basically, you could probably rub it all over yourself, and it smells like ylang ylang because that's what it is. So, have you ever wondered how pineapples are grown? I have this experiment going on for the past two years in my house of me trying to grow, grow pineapples. Basically, you chop the top of the stem off of it, the, the flower part of it and you dry it, the crown of it, yes, thank you, video woman. Uh, the, uh, my camera woman here is telling me that it's called the crown of the pineapple. So you chop the crown off, you remove the excess foliage from around it, you let it dry under the sun for a few days, and then you put it in a small cup of water. And sure enough, all of these leaves will come up and you'll get a pineapple on top. So one crown grows one pineapple, so this crown over here is from the first pineapple that it came from. So they basically, in this tropical climate to grow a pineapple, you don't have to go through all those steps. You just chop the top off and put it in the ground and a new pineapple grows. Because there's no direct sunlight here from all of the shade created by the plants, you'll actually see that it's quite small comparatively to what pineapples look like. So if it were in direct sunlight in tropical weather, you would be able to see uh, a full size pineapple. And these are quite sharp, the, the teeth on those So leaves. here we have a sign that says Kizi Kizi Avovo, hot peppers. So if you take a look at this, these are those tiny but deadly hot peppers. They are extremely spicy. This is a say, similar to what grows in Congo. They call it Pili Pili Congole. And when this grows to its maturity, mature size, its maturity, it looks very similar to an habanero pepper. Can any of you guess what plant this is over here? The henna tree. This is what Mendi looks like when it's grown. So these tiny leaves is, will grow into its mature size, then they are dried, they're made into a powder, they're mixed with water and they're applied on your hands for decoration, they're applied in your hair for orangifying your hair, and also the, the older generation used to apply this in their hair, not for color, but because they would say tandakvare, because it's so hot in Africa, the henna, the mendi in their hair would make a cooling effect according to them. I don't buy it though. But this is what henna grows like over here in Zanzibar. So this is what vanilla looks like over here. We see um vanilla because it's in Kiswahili, so it's not vanilla, it's um vanilla with a half M before it. This is what the vanilla beans look like as they're growing over here. So to get vanilla extract, these are basically sliced down the center, the seeds are scraped, it's put into a glass jar and some sort of, some sort of liqueur is added to it to take out, uh, extract the flavor of it, which is why it's called vanilla extract. Vanilla bean paste is basically just scraped and uh, put into a jar. We usually use vanilla bean paste because it's free of alcohol, so we can enjoy it without having alcohol in our cuisine. Any idea what this tree is over here? You can sort of get a hint from the scraping of the bark. We call this thudge in our language. This is actually cinnamon. You scrape the bark off like this. You get this, which looks exactly like what we buy from the marketplace at home. And this is the inside, so it's dried. It smells so aromatic and so much like, I'd say like it smells like the holiday season like fruit cake and, and uh, suet pudding and stuff like that. And this is used in um, all of the Indian cuisine as well. This is used, this is one of the key ingredients again in garam masala. We use taj in almost all of the vagars, the tarkas we do of rices, biryanis and stuff like that. And this can basically, it's scraped and every fourth year it is uh, 
it regrows. So you can see these scrape marks over here. So it can be scraped and within four years, it is uh, it regrows itself so it can be scraped again. This is the root of, and as one of the patrons here is telling me, it can be used for um, when you're sick, feeling nauseated. It has a very, almost like a peppermint effect. <laughs> My camera woman is being really <laughs> hilarious right now. It's like Vicks. So another, I'm being hinted all these things in right now from all you're directions. Not listening. <laughs> so it's like Vix. Did make, I say? It? They make Vix with this. They make Vix with this. There, Kabisa, I got it. They make Vix with this. So this is one of the ingredients in Vix. Clears your sinuses, but it's not. There's no eucalyptus in here, so it's not like. But it's like still, really good. And this is what Vicks is made of, and it clears your sinuses, makes you feel so much better. And I wish I could bring this back to Canada and plant it, but I think they'd stop me at immigrations if I even attempted that. So behind me over here is the cocoa tree. Cocoa trees originated in uh, in South America, and they have they basically made their way here, so it's sustainable for the locals. So this is where chocolate comes from, one of my favorite treats. You see these giant long-legged ants over here and we've been warned that they are really vicious they will really bite and it'll sting this is a baby cocoa pod over here and in the distance there you can see more mature cocoa, cocoa pods so inside it there are uh, even more pods and that's what's roasted and ground into cocoa powder then that is what's mixed with sugar and dairy and made into the, the treat we love so much chocolate so over here we see the turmeric plant. Turmeric is also known as Hardar in Gujarati, Haldi in, in Sanskrit and Hindi based languages, Devnagri based languages. This is the root. So Hardar grows underground. This is turmeric in its most raw form. And it's a root plant basically. And it smells very perfumey. Basically you can buy um, turmeric root from Whole Foods and other organic stores like that and it's used in pickles and stuff like that but to get the turmeric powder you dry this and then it's ground and that's basically the greatest antibiotic there is and it's used for disinfecting it has so many good qualities of it I basically add it into almost everything I make including my tea so it has this effect and it you basically you'll never get arthritis if you have this every day. You should aim to have at least a minimum of about one teaspoon per day. And if you look at this, the pigment of this is so strong. This almost looks like a carrot right now, but if you rub it on your finger, you'll see that it has such strong pigment, it stains your fingers. And this is the powdered hardar is known of. And I'm gonna do a small taste test over here. It tastes like exactly like turmeric root. That's what it is. So it's really strong and it's not that typical powdered hardware flavor. It's very perfumey. I've had this a lot in Mesana, in Shankus, uh, and in Naujivan in the Ayurveda health resorts. And it is perfumey and I'm sure my teeth are gonna turn orange and my tongue is gonna turn orange and eventually Whatever comes out of me will be orange as well. After the turmeric, I think I have uh, orange yellow teeth. This is Zanzibar iodine over here. This is how it grows on these trees over here. Now what Zanzibar iodine is used for is if you're bleeding or have any injury, you basically touch it and get a few drops of that. And it stings at first. You rub it in and it, it basically treats you. And it's the sap of this that's used for medicinal purposes. So over here we see the ngude plant, the tree, and this is curry leaves. So it's called neem in uh, Sanskrit and it is called garipata in Hindi and it's called limro in Gujarati and Kachavari. This is what it looks like. And it is, so this is actually the baby ones are called limri over here. This is the ideal thing that you would put in a vagar and pour on top of dhokra, khandavi, it has a robust fragrance and this smelling this in Zanzibar just takes me right back to when I was in Gujarat and in uh, especially in up north by Patern at Shankus and uh, they would actually bathe you in neem water they'd give you a neem bath 
This has so many antibacterial qualities. You can buy neem lotion, neem toothpaste, and also neem soap. And it is, it just, I want to take this back to Canada just so I can make a tokro from this basically. It smells so nice. You use this in every vegetarian curry there is. And it is, when my uh, camera woman smelt it, she was like, ugh, it doesn't smell too good. But this is, takes me right back to Gujarat. And in Florida, it grows there very well because of the tropical weather. And everyone just grows it in their home, so you don't even buy it over there. And it grows like wildfire once you plant it. And that way you can have fresh vagar every single day. So, I don't know the name of this plant, I can't remember, but this is basically something used by native Zanzibari women to make pigmentation for lipstick. So if you look at this, it's a pod. When you open it up like this, you'll be able to see it looks like small pink peppercorns inside. And... Um, once you crush these, you get this pigment, which you can apply on your lips as lipstick, or as locals call it, lipsticky. So I suppose this is what's used in the Zanzibar red curry powder to make that red pigment. So this is what traditional tribal makeup is like. Let's see if I can get the color off my hand now. I have a turmeric color and this color. So over here we have a clove tree and we have our tour guide climbing up to get some samples for us. And look at how he climbs up without shoes or anything. <laughs> this is a skill I think we should all know. There it is. I caught it. So, this is how it grows. No, show us coming down now. <laughs> so, this is how the loving or long grows and it is cloves and it looks exactly like what a dried clove looks like except it is green in color so if you look at this now there's some let me do a smell and a taste test actually to see what it's like oh yeah you can get that it actually already numbed my tooth <laughs> it's very it's much stronger than the cloves we use for cooking this is in its raw form so it's a spice used in holiday cooking, so in fruitcakes and stuff like that. It's also heavily used in uh, Oriental cuisine and in South Asian cuisine. So in Indian cuisine, this is a key ingredient in garam masala as well. And it is used in lots of savory dishes. This actually, the clove oil, is what you can use to numb your teeth or your gums if you're having tooth pain. It's also used if you apply henna to intensify the color of it. And in other use, I don't think many of you know of, is that... This is a natural insect repellent, so if you keep some cloves in your closet, you'll never need to use mothballs at all. Traditional silk clothes are used, basically it's wrapped in a muslin cloth and in the four corners you wrap cloves in it so that no insects will ever intrude. So over here we have banana leaves. Banana leaves are used all throughout the Southeast, yeah, Southeast yeah. Asia, the Orient, and especially yeah. South India to eat off of and they make uh, plates out of this when it's dried, but you also just eat straight off of this, completely bi uh, biodegradable, eco-friendly and everything. And here you have the banana. In Kiswahili, it's called Ndizi, and you can see that bananas grow upside down in this cluster. So I first saw something like this being sold in Hyderabad, and this is how it grows. And when you buy a banana over here, you don't just buy one or two, you buy the entire stock of it, like 40 or 50, and every day, the whole family would eat one each so one line would go and spiral up it actually ripens from bottom up so you start eating from the bottom of the cluster and by the time you work your way to the top the top is right so this is how bananas grow over here in zanzibar same way all around the world Show me. Ambavari ma tahuke ka koya lari amba 
बड़ी कोयल कोयल एंड दिस इज वेर एवर दर्ज मैंगो ट्रीज दर इज एन अबंडेंस ऑफ कोयल बर्ड्स विच हैव अ स्वीट सिंगिंग साउंड यू कैन सी दीज आर कची कैरीज ओवर हियर एंड फ्रॉम वट माई ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स टोल मी वन दे वर यंग एंड दे वॉन्ट इट स्नैक दे टेक अप अ रॉक एंड थ्रो इट एट दिस एंड अ क्लस्टर ऑफ मैंगोज विद फॉल डाउन दे वुड मेक मिठो मर्ची एंड दे वुड डिप इट एंड हैव कची कैरी लाइक दैट दिस जिस टेक्स मी राइट बैक टू इंडिया वन आई सी दिस एंड द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट केम टू माई माइंड वन आई सॉ दिस was Rajul Mehta and her Mola Ji Shan Geet Amba Wadi Man Tau Ke Ek Koya Lagi So at the end of everything this is how they manufacture the products and package it so this is basically the tourist trap right here and because it's christmas time it's in the shape of a christmas tree ornament there is turmeric cumin red chili lemongrass cloves fennel red curry uh, uh dhana powder saffron powder and these two i presume are man made there's coriander black pepper cumin turmeric hardar cumin and red chili so uh all of these different spices are here this is star anise over here zanzibar red curry which it's basically used for coloring and food i'm not sure what it's made of uh this is the biryani masala this is the lemongrass tea over here this is hibiscus flower dried cinnamon coffee the dhana akha dhana here is vanilla coffee the zanzibar curry powder vanilla tea zanzibar tea masala jiru loving pili pili uh lemongrass tea pure lemongrass fodino arak chai there is over here fish masala chili powder uh ginger tea with vanilla there is javantri and um the jaifur in the middle there is banana tea that sounds interesting chicken masala clove tea an unnamed package zanzibar arabica coffee powder there is black pepper corns over here there's also cinnamon tea with vanilla which was similar to what we saw on the other side this is here uh coffee beans all different types of teas ginger coffee cumin powder so this is this is actually the secret ingredient in vegetarian samosas and vadas it's just a hidden shadow a hint of candela uh, loving there is also cinnamon tea here again lemongrass powder there is lemongrass coffee and more lemongrass coffee this has been the spice farm in zanzibar it has been an amazing experience to see what uh we use on a day-to-day -day basis in our cooking to see its actual raw formation of how it's growing and how it's being grown how it's being processed and how we see it in the stores how the consumer gets it if you like this video please hit the subscribe button please give a thumbs up and please hit the bell icon so that you're notified by email every time i have a new upload thanks Karibu Zanzibar Karibu Zanzibar